talk about your children? Correct. And you talked about where Mr. Jensen worked? No. So you didn't know that he was working as a stockbroker? I knew he was working as a stockbroker. We didn't talk about Mark. Okay. So you had testified on direct that Julie had told you that Mark was weird and odd or strange. Correct. So you did talk about Mark? She volunteered that. I didn't ask. I didn't ask if you asked, sir. I asked if you talked about him. That was, that was basically it. I didn't want to hear about Mark. But you did, she did offer she did information. Offer this. Yes, she did. Now, in January of 1992, you received a call from someone in the Pleasant Prairie Police Department. Um, give me the date again, please. Sometime in January of 1992. I'm, I'm somewhere in January 1992. He would have called you about yes. whether you had been making calls okay. or leaving letters, correct? Okay. okay. Do you remember that? Um, not really. Do you remember talking to a law enforcement officer on the phone about letters and phone calls? I remember when I was down in North Carolina, okay, getting, getting phone calls. I don't remember the any phone call from it, uh, in January. Um, in January of 1992 is when you sent that letter to Julie Jensen. Correct. And that was after she had asked you not to contact her. I sent the letter. After she had asked you not to contact her. Correct. And the letter wasn't the only thing you had sent to her. You also sent a Christmas card. Yes. And you received this call from the Pleasant Prairie police officer um, who was upset that you had lied to him about contacting Julie Jensen. Um, okay, let's go. No. You didn't receive that call from I Sergeant Hunter? I, I don't remember a call from, from Hunter. Um, I think maybe in January. I'm not, I am not, I don't recall that call okay I recall um, I don't remember when I received received the call from him do you remember off sergeant hunter being angry at you because you had lied to him about whether you had contacted Julie Jensen I did not lie do you remember that that's what detective hunter said to you or sergeant hunter said to you Objections hearsay your honor he said he didn't lie so stay so I'm going to show you what's been marked as exhibit 59 Actually, I, I don't. You don't remember receiving that in the mail? I don't remember receiving it, no. You don't I remember don't. receiving a harassment ticket? No. Do you remember testifying about the harassment ticket? Yes, I do, but I don't remember receiving it. So you don't ever remember receiving this ticket in the mail from I, Sergeant Hunter for harassment? I remember receiving a citation. Okay, I don't remember what, was, what it looked like or what it was. I, since I didn't do anything... Since I didn't contact her. So your testimony today is that you didn't contact her. My definition of contact, okay, the definition that is in, in the dictionary is physically going to see. I sent a letter to her, to her sister-in-law. That's what I did. You also sent a Christmas card to her. Oh, the Christmas card was the letter. And this citation that you received from the Pleasant Prairie Police Department was for harassment. Okay. And it was issued to on January 14th of 1992. Okay. Eight days after you had sent the letter to Julie Jensen. All right. In, in January of 2008, you were subpoenaed to testify in a hearing in Kenosha County. Okay. Is that true? I couldn't tell you. You don't remember the, testifying? I, I, Oh, pardon me? You don't remember testifying? Ask, ask the question once more time, please. In January of 2008, you were subpoenaed to testify in a hearing in Kenosha County. January 2008. Actually, in Walworth County. Oh, okay, yes. And at that time, you knew there was a warrant out for your arrest. I didn't know I questioned it. 
you asked the prosecution if yes. there was a warrant out for your arrest. Yes. Because you had never paid that harassment citation. That is correct. And they told you that they would look into it. Yes. And they told you not to worry about it. Yes. And that it would be taken care of. They didn't tell me that it would be taken care of. They said they would look at it. Okay. That's basically it. I'm gonna I didn't know the outcome. I'm going to refer counsel to the jury tra the transcript from January 24th, 2008. Page number? I believe it's 91 of 130. Okay. <laughs> 91 of 130. Yeah, my page number starts at 188. So. 22. 222. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe that's not the one, sorry. Two twenty two in what line? So I keep thinking of this relationship as kind of like the movie Same Time Next Year. Uh, you know, they would just meet regularly, but no more than once or twice, occasionally three times uh, in, in a given year. This is um, Perry Tarika. He's the guy that uh, had an affair, as he detailed, uh, with Julie Jensen back in the early 90s. Mark Jensen, when he found out, did not like it. I, I focus on weird things sometimes. I, when, he, when he quibbled over the the uh, term contact, when he last contacted Julie Jensen and he referred to the dictionary definition, hey, I just meant, you know, when I was last close to her. In fact, the definition in the, de in the dictionary is the act or state of touching, a touching or meeting as uh, of two things or people, immediate proximity or association. So he's somewhat right there, but of course, if you read further and see the examples, they mention telephone, letters. Anyway, just, just my preoccupation. Uh, joining me here this afternoon, uh, Bob Hilla. He is a trial attorney in the area, and Catherine Lazardo. She is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. She is a trial attorney as well. So Catherine, um, critical witness here. He really is for the prosecution's case. Uh, he's coming off a little snippy on cross-examination. What's your take on the guy? Yes, he is. I mean, my take on the guy is he's really trying to remember facts that are so far away in the 90s. That's why when he's asked specifically, did you get a call from this sergeant in January 1992? I'm surprised that if he, he could remember, because I, I can't remember that far away. Uh, but what we see here during his testimony that they're trying to bring out the fact that he might have been biased with his testimony, that there's an incentive because of the harassment citation that he received. And supposedly the investigators were going to uh, take care of based on what he testified in 2008. It's, this is such, Bob, this is such a weird soap opera because you have this initial affair, which we now are learning had some tentacles that lasted beyond that crazy weekend. Uh, and then you have Jensen having his own affair with a woman who had just gotten married and then later became his wife uh, after Julie Jensen's death. That was back in uh, the death in 98, the, the remarriage in, in uh, 04. Uh, put your spin on this guy's role in the big picture here. Well, I think that this guy's role in the big picture is he probably started the whole decline in Jensen's relationship as a defendant. I mean, you know, he he gave some very good information to the jury in the direct on uh, motive, the tie in why um, Jensen had a reason to do what they're claiming he did to his wife, killing her. Uh, but then on cross-examination, you don't get a real lot of love for this witness because, you know, he gets flustered, then he dodges questions. He has selective memory, but he also then says, well, you know, how do you define contact? And then he gets at the end, you know, argumentative and combative. So, um, you know, and, and then the fact that, you know, the jury's not going to look kindly on him that he's sleeping with the defendant's wife 
in their bed, in their home, bringing toys to their kids, you know, it, it, you know, it, it kind of has two edges to the sword for the state, this testimony. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know that that whole first weekend was crazy, um, but uh, and apparently apparently this guy couldn't shake Julie Jensen. So uh, again, the soap opera continues. We're going to take a quick break. Thanks, guys. Good stuff.